get ready because we got some very unpredictable weather about to hit us. Based on what we are hearing now, you're going to see a lot more as the day wears on. And we want to be safe in this case. We want to, we want to exercise caution and be ready for anything. Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael Piroman. Ominous words from Mayor Bill de Blasio. March came in like a lion and seems to want to stay around with no sign of spring in sight. In a grudge match with Mother Nature, this fourth nor'easter is expected to dump up to 16 inches of snow in some areas before it's over. Coastal flooding will continue to be a concern through the night, as will keeping electric power on in areas that were hardest hit during the last storm. Members of the Department of Sanitation are working 12-hour shifts to make sure our main streets are passable in the battle to fight back against the elements yet again. In a moment, we'll be headed to the heart of the operation where Metro Focus correspondent Naeem Douglas is standing by. In the meantime, the MTA has been updating information on storm prep. And in a break for city dwellers, alternate side of the street parking was suspended Wednesday and will be suspended again on Thursday. The mayor also enacted a code blue for the city's homeless, increasing the number of shelters available in an effort to make sure they survive the storm. All in all, winter-weary New Yorkers are sighing no more and continuing to ask what's behind this one, two, three, four punch that has been pummeling us. For that, I turn to Metro Focus co-host Jenna Flanagan, who is standing by with John Davitt, chief meteorologist for Spectrum New York One News. Jenna? Thanks, Raf. So, John, thank you so much for joining us on this snowy day. Yeah, welcome to the first full day of spring. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> this is not what anybody had in mind. But first, tell us a little bit about this weather pattern. Why is this the first day of spring? Yeah, no, we have been stuck in this cold weather pattern all month long, really. We've seen 14 consecutive days below normal. This is our fourth nor'easter. This is more like what we see in January, February than anything else. So. What's, I mean, th there's been lots of different talk about accumulation levels or whatever, but I think what most people want to know is when is this going to be gone? <laughs> well, we got to break this pattern, and this pattern might take another five, seven days to break. So I think when we get to the end of March, start of April, we're going to get warmer. But until then, uh, we still have cold conditions and maybe another storm in it. One of the things that I've been hearing is that actually climate change is having an effect on causing these late season storms. Is that correct? Yeah, no, absolutely. So what's going on is we are stuck, frozen, if you want, in this jet stream pattern that is more typical of January or February. And what scientists are saying is with climate change, we're getting less temperature contrast. You don't have the very cold air at the poles and then the very hot air at the equator. That's what drives our jet stream pattern. So the jet streams normally last about five to seven days, one pattern, then it will switch. And normally we get into more of a spring pattern, but with climate change, we're getting less temperature contrast. And these jet stream patterns that used to last seven days are now sometimes lasting a month. So how much are these weather patterns? Are they affecting other aspects of our environment, let's say? Well, sure. What we're getting usually are longer growing seasons with climate change, but we're getting more extremes. We get stronger storms. We get more intense heat waves. We get more colder, intense uh, cold surges. So what we're getting is a lot of extremes when we used to get more of a medium temperature or a medium storm. Now it's all highs and lows. All right. So then oh, with all of these changes that we're sort of adjusting to, is this the new normal that we should expect? Should we expect to have these kind of storms late in March? Yeah, it's starting to seem that way. Last year, we had the warmest February on record and then a cold March. In fact, March was colder than February. This year, same thing. In fact, in February, we had a high of 78 one, degree, one day. That's the warmest we've ever had in February. So this might be what we're going to see more and more. All right, so one of the things that I'm noticing from this storm, as opposed to ones earlier in the season, is that we've got these big, thick flakes that are falling. So, but they don't seem to last as long. So why is that? Well, when the snow is wetter, because it's later in the season, the snowflakes kind of clump together. So we're not seeing just individual snowflakes here. We're seeing snowflakes that are clumping together, kind of like mini snowballs falling on our heads right now. Uh, that's definitely what it feels like. Uh, would this be good snowman weather? <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Compact's really nice. Uh, just not driving weather, uh, not trans you know, any kind of transportation weather. Rail lines already canceled. Airlines hit hard. So these storms have huge implications. Uh, today, uh, so many people stayed home from work, so it's really a loss of, uh, of a work day for a lot of people. Public schools are closed in New York City, so this really has some, some significant 
travel and ec economic impacts. And of course, visibility seems to be one of the big issues. Yeah, for sure. When it snows heavy, visibility comes down and planes can't fly and it makes for tough conditions. So this really does not impact just New York City, but it has ripple effects throughout the country and throughout the world. Well, let's talk positive here. So <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. Uh, first of all, what can we expect coming up in the next two weeks or so? Yeah, we're definitely going to see better weather. Can't get much worse than this. Uh, we're going to be talking about some 40s for this weekend. And then next week, weather models hint that we may get back to a normal weather pattern. Go figure. Maybe Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we're talking about temperatures into the 50s, uh, which is a good thing because that's the Mets home opener here in New York City. And that is important. We do not need a snow <laughs> delay for a home opener. No. Um, so if that's going to be the case then, once we get back to the quote unquote normal temperatures for this time of year, can we hope at least that April will take off without any more snowstorms, any more flurries, any more? No one wants to see another flake. Yeah, it's unlikely we'll get another storm, but it's not impossible. But we do see this jet stream pattern breaking down. And once that breaks down, these threat of storms should go away. So looking good. So we have already seen the city cleaning the sidewalks and they'll be cleaning for the rest of the night. Yep. Uh, but so what are some of the most important things that the city needs to be doing to make sure that it's ready to go for Thursday? Yeah, the city really, it's a tough thing. They have all this snow coming and borderline temperature, so they have to prepare for what could be a worst case scenario. And they're doing that. Department of Sanitation is out. Uh, those folks are tired of the snow. We get tweets from them and <laughs> they've had enough, but they have incredible machinery. They have a melting machine. What they do is they take all this snow and they put it into the back of this heavy truck and it's got something that heats the snow and then they have a drain that goes out to the bottom. They park it over the sewers and it drains and they melt the snow. So instead of just plowing snow here in New York City, they actually melt it and it goes into the sewer system. So they are high tech. All right, then. That definitely sounds like they're high tech. Um, but what about their salting? I mean, there's been a lot of talk about all of the salt on the roads and that actually affecting the ecosystem of the waterways, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So the salt is going to get into the waterways, but it also gets into the manhole cover. So when you have water and salt, that conducts electricity really well. And when we get storms like this, where there's a lot of heavy snow that turns into water and with the salt, we get manhole explosions all over the place. So. Yeah, there's, there's so many concerns with a storm like this in New York City. All right, so this is definitely a lot for uh, the city to be prepared for. Um, any other concerns coming out of a late season storm? Well, yeah, when we have this heavy wet snow, it sticks to the trees really well. And with a nor'easter, you've got strong winds. The last couple storms, we've seen power outages, which are unusual in New York. Most of the power is underground, but not all of it. So we get down trees on subway tracks that are elevated. We get down trees on power lines. And we had people without power last time for three or four days. They were struggling to get that power back up before the next nor'easter. So that's a concern today, too. All right, well, John, thank you so much for joining me outside and yet yeah, another nor'easter. Unbelievable. We appreciate uh, your content and your contacts. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. The calendar says spring, but it certainly does not feel or look that way as the fourth nor'easter in just about a month's time comes through to our area. Now, while many New Yorkers are winter weather weary, the city says it is fully prepped and ready to deal with Mother Nature has in store for it. I'm on Spring Street in Lower Manhattan at one of many sanitation department garages. The department says it has spreaders hit the streets as soon as the first snowflake hit the ground. It has 693 spreaders at its disposal to send out on the streets. Authorities are asking people to stay off the roads if you can. During the storm, it makes it much easier for those spreaders and plows to make their way around when there are less cars on the streets. And you certainly won't see any school buses picking up students, and that's because Mayor Bill de Blasio closed schools for the day in anticipation of the storm. Not having the school buses out there and all the uh, families moving around helped a lot. So I, I do think the early warnings are helping. People are really listening. Uh, I thank New Yorkers for that. And then that's allowing sanitation to do their job. If you did have to go into work, you will definitely need more time for your commute. Now, as I said, this is the fourth nor'easter in just about a month, but the city says it has plenty of salt on hand. In fact, it has 220,000 tons of salt and the salt spreaders you can see going by can carry up to 16 tons of salt and sanitation is calling for reinforcements. 
for this, they will have some help from the Department of Transportation and the Parks Department. Now, as the storm started to gain steam, it will have more than 2,300 workers fanned out across all five boroughs. They will be working on 12 hour shifts to make sure that sanitation has the person power to keep up with the storm. Now, the worst of it is expected to hit in the evening, so having enough people is definitely key. Sanitation has most of its plow trucks and spreaders in Brooklyn and Queens, and that is, of course, because of their size. But there are hundreds of trucks per borough to make sure the streets are salted and plowed when needed, especially in those bigger streets. Now, I talked with a representative from the sanitation department, and she tells me they're not particularly looking at any specific area in the city, but instead will monitor how the storm behaves and divert person power, if need be, to those areas. Now, the city appears to be prepared, but we want to make sure New Yorkers in the tri-state area are prepared as well. Now, expect this storm to make for a messy commute. If you did have to go into work today, plan for those delays on mass transit and the possibility of canceled service for train lines. Checking in repeatedly will be key and important today. The National Weather Service is expecting near whiteout conditions during this storm in parts of New Jersey as well as Long Island. In fact, New Jersey's governor declared a state of emergency. Now, you may remember these areas have already been hit particularly hard because of the last three storms. There were power outages for thousands of people in Westchester, New Jersey, as well as parts of Long Island. And they were also dealing with coastal and low-lying areas. The flooding coming from some of those last storms is definitely something that we'll be keeping an eye on.